Have you always dreamed of owning a pool home but didn't think that you could afford the upkeep? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I maintain my pool and save myself thousands of dollars in the process, and I'm gonna show you how to do it too. And if you stay till the end, I'm gonna tell you the one piece of equipment that I purchased that saves me hundreds of dollars per year. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Linda Hart here. I'm a realtor in St. Petersburg, Florida. And on this channel, I like to talk about buying and selling homes, as well as giving homeowners tips on how they can save money. So let's get started. If that sounds good to you, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new video drops every Thursday. The first thing you need to know is there are three C's in pool care. And the first C is clean. We have to clean our pool. So what's the first step in cleaning our pool? Skimming the pool. We wanna make sure that we skim the pool at least twice a week to make sure that the debris that floats on the top of the pool doesn't make it to the bottom, which makes our filter work harder and it is more expensive to maintain our pool that way. Tip number two is to scrub the walls and steps of your pool. Now this is probably the most backbreaking of all the work in taking care of my pool and I can easily spend an hour scrubbing the side because I'm a perfectionist and I want to make sure that all of that algae that's sticking to the side of my pool is scrubbed off so that my vacuum can pick it up. I advise you scrubbing your pool two times a week in the summer and one time a week in the winter. Tip number three, vacuum. Now, if you have an in-ground pool, it, you'll most likely have a manual vacuum that hooks up to a pole. There's a head and you stick it into your skimmer. You have to push it along. And one of the things that I invested in was a Creepy Crawly, which is an automatic pool cleaner. It runs by the suction side of my pool. Uh, there are also pool cleaners that are robots that run just by electronic. And then there are um, the pressure side that runs from your jets and your jets make it go uh, through the pool and it helps to vacuum that way. Those are usually called Polaris and the kind that I use is, su is a suction side pool cleaner and it's called a Creepy Crawly but they make a ton Zodiac and I can't even think of all the other ones. There's a million out there. So they're about $179 but it saves me hours and hours of vacuuming the crud off the bottom of the pool. And I have a bird cage over my pool, so we don't get a ton of leaves, but the pollen in the spring really does collect and it gets in the bottom of the pool and it really saves me a ton of time. So I highly recommend investing in a automatic pool vacuum of some sort. Tip number four is to clean the filter basket as well as your skimmer basket. And that helps to get all of the debris, all of the leaves that collect from your skimmer on the side of the pool as well as from your automatic vacuum before it gets into the pump filter because it's a lot of work. The second C in pool care is chemicals. Tip number five is to invest in a home chemical testing kit. And this is, it looks like a little tackle box and they're about $40 and it's got all kinds of little drops and different liquids so that you can test your water and it helps to tell you the alkalinity of your water as well as the pH and your chlorine levels. Now the con to this is you have to know what to do when your levels are one way or the other, and I'm no chemist, so I don't do that. I use my next tip and I get a sample of my water and I take it to my local pool store and they test it and they give me a report that tells me what I need to add, how much I need to add, and what my levels are so that I know exactly when my pool is safe. And if I add chemicals or I need to add anything more, then I'll take another sample back before I, having the kids swim or having company over to make sure that the levels are where they should be before anybody gets in the pool. A bonus tip about taking your pool water to the store is they'll often ask you, how does the pool look? So what I do is I take my phone and I take a picture of what the pool looks like because if it looks a little green or a little yellow, they can see that and they'll know exactly what to tell me to do for it. Whereas if I just say, well, it kind of looks a little green or it looks blue or, you know, cause I don't know. It definitely helps to have a picture so that your technician can tell you exactly what it might be needing that the pool water test sample may not say. So 
little tip. Tip number six is to, what is tip number six? <laughs> tip number six is to keep that floating rubber ducky full of stabilizer tablets. Now, those are little hockey puck shaped chlorinators that you stack up in the rubber ducky and he floats around the pool and it delivers a constant stream of chemicals that help to stabilize your pool. So that helps the other chemicals if you have to add a pH adjuster or an alkalinity adjuster. It helps those chemicals work better when you have stabilizer tablets constantly serving your pool. So make sure that rubber ducky is full. Tip number seven is to shock your pool once a week in the summer and twice per month in the winter. Now there's two different kinds of shock. There is a liquid shock, which is chlorine, big jugs, I think it's half a gallon. Or there's the powder shock that comes in little pouches. And every each one uh, works a little bit differently. But if you do that once a week in the summer and twice a week in the twice a month in the winter, your pool chlorine level should never be too low or too high. And again, get your water tested before you swim to make sure that, every, that it's safe for everybody to swim in your pool. Is this information helping you? If so, please give this video a like and comment below. Tell me, do you take care of your pool or do you hire a service that takes care of it? I wanna know. Hey everyone, the last C is circulation. And this is super important. Your pool would not stay swimmable, blue, pretty, sparkling if your pool did not have constant circulation. Tip number eight is to aim your jets in a clockwise or counterclockwise position so that the, the pool water circulates in that direction or the other direction. Any pool expert will tell you to have your jets fa facing so that your water is going in one direction the whole way around. Tip number nine, run your pump eight to 12 hours in the summer and in the winter, six to eight hours. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm gonna give you a tip here. Water constantly circulating is much healthier for your pool than to have it stagnant. So make sure that those jets all go in the same direction uh, and you'll be in good shape. Tip number 10 is to clean your filter once every six months. Now there are three different types of filters. I have a DE filter, which stands for diatomaceous earth and that is like a really fine white sand put in through the skimmer and that filter that sits on the inside is a, it's kind of like a grate that's covered in a mesh and that sand goes through your pump and it lays on top of that filter and it filters out all the debris that comes through your filter. The second type of filter is called a sand filter and that is just a bunch of sand that sits in the bottom of your filter and as the water runs over that sand, it catches all the leaves and all of the debris and sits on top. And the third type of filter is a cartridge filter. So think of this like a oil filter in a car. And those filters, um, it catches everything, the water runs through it and it catches everything. And all you have to do is rinse it off probably once every two months. I wouldn't go every six months on a cartridge filter. Uh, I would definitely go a little bit more frequently than that. How do you know when your filter needs to be cleaned? There's a gauge that sits on the top of the filter and at normal times when the filter is clean, it usually runs about 10 PSI, which is pounds per square inch. And I know with my filter, when I see it get up to like 20, I know that the pressures are too high, that that's time for me to clean out the filter. So what is the one piece of equipment that saves me hundreds of dollars per year that I purchase for my pool? It is a variable speed pump. Now this variable speed pump was an investment. It cost me uh, about $2,800 for the pump and a new DE filter. The advantage of getting a variable speed pump runs at full speed for the first two hours of the day. For the next eight hours, it runs at about 25% speed. And then the last two hours of the day, it runs about 50% speed. And what this does is it constantly circulates the water in your pool but without running at full speed for the full 12 hours during the summer or six to eight hours during the winter time, saving me hundreds of dollars per year. My bill 
during the summer, I saved $40 per month last summer. And during the winter, I saved about $20 per month just from having this. So over time, it's gonna save me tons of money. So I'm super excited about it. Now, if you just bought this home with the pool and it has a fully functional pump, I don't recommend going out and spending $2,800 on a new variable speed pump. Use your, Use pump, your pump until, until, it, until dies. it dies. But when you just buy a home, the last thing you wanna do is have to put a new pool pump in. However, if the homeowner is replacing a pool pump due to an inspection issue, ask them to buy a variable speed pump and see what, see how you can make, make out on that. Or maybe you can pay the upcharge on a variable speed pump and then you don't have to pay for it down the road. Win-win. If you like this video, please make sure to like it, hit the bell to be notified. I drop a video every Thursday. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next one.